Hello, welcome to Birkenhead Priory. My name's Caroline and today we're in the chapter house. We're going to focus on the window directly in front of us, which is by Sir John Ninian Comper, who was a famous Scottish stained glass artist. We're very privileged to have one of his windows. Sir John is actually interred in Westminster Abbey, where he also has a window. So we'll begin by looking at the far left-hand side of the window. It's divided into five panes. On the far left-hand side, you can see a knight giving a casket. The casket is a depiction of Birkenhead Priory, and the knight is Hamo de Massey. There were three Hamo de Masseys. We think it was the third who provided the funds for the Priory, because in 1150, he would have been around 50 years of age himself. At the time they thought if you had a lot of blood on your hands, which he would have because he was a warrior, then a good way to ensure safe passage into the afterlife was to provide funds for a priory. You would also provide the funds for the order, which was Benedictine order, to pray for your soul and also the soul of your descendants. If anyone's familiar with the area, you'll know Sawcall Massey and Dunham Massey, all part of the same family. If we then move to the panel next to Hanno de Massey, that's a depiction of the Virgin Mary and Jesus Christ. And if you look directly above their heads, you'll see the three wheat sheaves of Cheshire in the crest. The central panel is Jesus Christ. To the right of Jesus, we have St. James, because this was the parish of St. James. St. James was a great apostle, and if you look closely at this window, you'll see scallop shells around St. James. You may be familiar with Santiago de Compostelo and the Camino de Santiago, which is the way of St. James. This is a pilgrimage undertaken by Catholic pilgrims. If you look at his staff, you'll see a scallop shell. Pilgrims would often carry a scallop shell to alert other pilgrims to the fact that they were on a pilgrimage. The scallop shell also served the purpose of being used as a sort of ration item. Along the way, churches would provide you with food and water and you could scoop up a scallop shell worth of food to take on the journey with you. Also, if you came across the stream, you'd be able to use it as a sort of cup. The earliest known association of St. James with this parish is on our seal, which dates to 1390. And that would have been found at one time on the cloisters. To the right of St. James, we had Edward I who was the only royal visitor to the, par the Priory. He came here in 1275 and 1277, and he was actually in this very room. So that adds another dimension to the chapter house when you stand here and think this is where Edward I has stood. They used to say the only thing worse than one royal visit was two, because of course you had to provide all the hospitality, so all the troops had to be fed, all the animals had to be looked after, so it was a very expensive visit for the Priory, which was relatively poor. Between the ankles of the King, you'll see a golden strawberry. And this is what Sir John Ninian Comper, the stained glass artist, used as his logo. His father, the Reverend John Comper, devoted his life to the poor. And on this particular occasion in 1903, he'd bought strawberries for children playing in the local park, sat down on a bench and passed away. After that, his son used the golden strawberry to show his work. So if you ever see any of his windows after his father's death, you'll see the strawberry in the bottom right hand corner. And if we move along to the very bottom of all the windows, you'll see a pane saying in memory of Robert Sidney Marsden. Ros Marsden was very much involved in looking after the Priory. He believed it needed to be valued. And it was through his good work and the work of the committee 
that the prey was restored to the condition we see it in today. Marsden is actually buried in a local cemetery called Flaybrick, and he was an interesting character in himself. He was involved in improving the water quality for people in this area. He also actually designed a patent for fabricated diamonds, but never actually followed through on this. So in himself, he's an interesting character. So we'll just leave you today to look at the window. Absolutely stunning when the light shines through.